in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem in Python. So we're given an array or a list of n distinct integers that are all sorted in ascending order. And we want to write a function that returns a fixed point. So we'll define what a fixed point is in a little bit in the array. And if there's no fixed point, then we'll go ahead and return none. So how we define a fixed point is a fixed point in an array, A, is an index i such that A of i is equal to i. So let's unpack that a little bit. Let's take a look at this example here, this list. So the fixed point in this particular array or list A is three. And the reason for that is that the element, the data three is at index three in this array, right? So zero, one, two, three, the value matches the value of the index at which it resides. So here's another example here. The fixed point in this array is zero. That's because this element zero is residing at the zeroth index in the array. So let's just clarify what we want to find in these uh, examples here that we've listed. Again, the fixed point in this array here is three because the third element in this array is equal to the value three. The fixed point in this array, the zeroth element is equal to zero. And in this final example here, this list does not contain a fixed point. That's because no element in this list is equal to the index at which it resides. So this isn't zero, that's not one, that's not two, not three, not four, not five. There's no fixed point. So the expected output, expected return value is gonna be none. So let's just step through initially kind of a naive way of uh, approach that we can solve this problem with. So the most naive way that we can solve this problem is we can just go through each of the elements in any given array that we're given as input. And we can check whether or not that element is equal to the index, right? So we can start off here at the beginning and we can say, is this element that we're on equal to zero? No, it's equal to negative 10, move on. Is this one equal to negative to one? No, it's equal to negative five, move on. Is this element equal to two? No, it's equal to zero, move on. Is this third element equal to three? Yes, it is. Go ahead and return that as the fixed point. So that's kind of the general linear approach that we can take. And since it's such a straightforward algorithm, let's just go ahead and code that up. And then we can do a very brief analysis of, of as to what the complexity is of that approach. So we'll call this find, let's call it find fixed point we'll call it linear because we're doing a linear number of operations and it'll take a list A. So what we can do is we can loop through all of the elements in the list. So we can say for I and range length of A and then what we can do is we can say if A of I is equal to I, then what we can do is we can just return A of I. So that's going to return the fixed point. Otherwise, if we go through the entire list and we don't find anything, we're just gonna return none because there's no fixed point in that list. So a very easy analysis of this algorithm is the time complexity is surely linear because we're going to go through the entire list in the worst case all the way through. So if the size of the list is of size n, then we're going to be experiencing time complexity of big O of n. And the space complexity in this case is not so bad. It's just constant because we're not doing anything with any auxiliary data structures or anything like that. We're just using a constant amount of space. So that's okay. So we have a linear amount of time that we're taking to solve this problem and we can do better. And one aspect of this problem that we're not actually taking advantage of is the fact that the arrays that we're given and the lists that we're given are, come in sorted form. So we're guaranteed that the list we're given as input is going to be sorted. And you can probably tell as sort of a hint that the fact that this video is residing in the binary search playlist that we're probably going to be making use of binary search as a key idea in solving this problem. So let's just go ahead and look at our examples and think about how one would apply binary search to these examples and see if we can tweak that idea to get us to recognize whether or not we've arrived at a fixed point or not. So let's take a look at this example here. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to put in comments right above these elements, the indices at which they reside. So I'll do that for the first and also the second example here. So what we have here is in binary search, what we usually do is we define the low point, the high point, and also the midpoint before we start going and searching for our target element. So the first element in this case is minus 10, the last element of this array is seven, and in this particular example, the midpoint is this element zero. Likewise, the midpoint in this array here is five. So what we can do is we can just check 
whether or not the value that we're on here is less than or greater than the index at which it resides. So in the case where the element itself is less than the index, we know that there's no way that that fixed point will be before it. The fixed point can only reside after it. Likewise, if we're here, at uh, this element here, the index is less than the element itself. Likewise, the only way we can find a fixed point is because is, is if we check the left portion of this array. And that's because two things, really. One thing is we know that the input is sorted. So as we go to the right, the elements are going to increase. So there's no way that we can find something that's going to be a fixed point in the right half of this example. And the other point that we didn't really specify too much was the fact that the integers are distinct. Because what happens if I do something like this? If I replace a few of these elements with the number five, and let's say I add one more element into this array, if I do this, then basically what happens, I don't have the guarantee that anything to the right of the midpoint is going to be strictly greater than the element that we're on. And as a result, we can't necessarily use this idea to help us. So the fact that the input in the arrays are sorted and distinct is kind of key for this idea to work. So let me just put this back to the way it was. So again, if we're on this element here, if it's less than the index at which it resides, the only way that we can find a fixed point is if we disregard the left half and then only focus on the right half. And similarly, in this case, if the index is less than the element itself, the only way we can find a fixed point is if we consider the left portion of the array. So you can kind of already see a very similar flavor to what you are most likely already familiar with in the binary search method that we saw before, where you're kind of disregarding half of the array and eliminating half of your search space and just continually doing that until you stumble on the element that you're after, in this case, the fixed point of the array. So let's go ahead and take that and see if we can go ahead and code this up. So let's go down here and actually define a function. So we'll say find fixed point and this is going to take an array A just like we did before for the linear version of this. We're going to define our two low and high points just as you will do in binary search. So we'll say low is equal to zero, that's the index of the start of the array, and that high is equal to length of A minus one, which is going to give us the last element in the array. And then we're going to do while low is less than or equal to high, we're going to perform our kind of typical binary search algorithm. So the first thing that we can do is we can calculate our midpoint, which we can just do by checking the low plus high and then dividing that by two, and that's going to give us the midpoint of the array. And then what we can do is we can do our essentially check to figure out how we shift the midpoint appropriately, just like we saw in binary search. And this is going to help us find the fixed point. So if the element at the midpoint is less than the midpoint itself, we're going to do something. And then otherwise, if the element at the midpoint is greater than the midpoint, the index, then we're gonna do something else. And then otherwise, we've stumbled on the element that we're after, so we'll just go ahead and return that uh, element itself as the fixed point. So these should look really familiar. If we have the element itself less than the index, that's exactly this case here. So if the element itself is less than the index, then what we want to do is we want to disregard the left half of this array, only focus on the right. So that means we need to redefine our low point. So low is now not the first element of the array, but it's mid plus one. So we're moving that low point up. We're disregarding half of the search space and our midpoint is now going to be the uh, midpoint plus one. So it's this right chunk of the array. Likewise, if we have this scenario here where the element itself is greater than the midpoint, so that would be akin to this situation here, the element itself is greater than the midpoint uh, or that, than the index at which it resides, then you know that you must focus on the left portion of the array and disregard everything on the right. So you're going to redefine the index that is the high point. So high point was here, high point is going to be moved down. So what we're gonna do here, and actually I should have an equal sign there. So we're gonna say high is equal to mid minus one. So then what we're gonna do is we also wanna make sure that we cover the case uh, if there is no 
fixed point. So if we go through this entire loop, we, we exit the loop and we have not returned any midpoint, we're gonna go ahead and return none because that indicates that we haven't found any appropriately fixed point and the specifications require that we just return none if no fixed point exists. So let's go ahead and verify that this works. And let's just say print fixed point or print find fixed point and then we'll give it the array A. So let me just move uh, these, let me just move these here. Let's move them down here so we can actually see them all on the same screen. And just to be explicit, I'll go ahead and comment out these so we know that we're just running this example right here. So we know that the fixed point in this particular example should give us three. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear the terminal and let's say Python find uh, fixed point and we indeed we get three as output. Let's just go ahead and continue down the chain here. We'll consider this example. So we're expecting a fixed point of zero. So we'll save it, we'll run it. We get the fixed point of zero, that seems right. And then let's just verify this last example here. We should get none because there's no fixed point. We'll run this and we get none because there's no fixed point in this last example here. So just a very brief analysis of this approach is we've cut down our search, uh, sorry, we cut down our time complexity. So we're not doing a linear amount of operations anymore. We're applying a binary search approach, which will give us a log n time complexity. So we can just say time complexity is going to be O of log n again, where n is the size of the array. And the reason that's log n is because we essentially are continually halving the search space that we're that we're focused on. So we start off with something of size n and we just continually chop it in half until we find the element that we're on. So generally anytime we have something of that form, you have a, a log n uh, complexity. And then the space complexity doesn't change. So space complexity is still going to be constant. And that pretty much does it for this video. So if you have any questions or comments or anything else, please don't hesitate to leave those things in the comment section below in this video. Uh, the code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub page, and you can download that, play with it, tweak it, and run it yourself if you want to try to play around with this particular piece of code. Uh, thanks again for watching, and have a great day.